Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yes, karibuni sana. Welcome to Shiloh. Praise of breakthrough. It is only now that you under this tent. Soon and very soon. The heat will be a thing of the past. For those who came from the main campus, that is what we went through before we built the cathedral. The same God who saw us through in building the cathedral, he sees us through even now in building Shiloh. Therefore, persevere. Tell your neighbor, persevere. Mwambia bumirie. Ni kwa muda. Na tunatoka hapa. Yes, we want to go straight to the word of God. My name is Beatrice Waithaka. For those who are visitors and those who have come back from school. And I'm born again this morning. I have the joy of the Lord as my strength. We've been redigging the wells and possessing <clears throat> the wells of our forefathers. And this morning we want to redig the well of waiting upon God. Waiting upon God. I don't know whom you've been waiting. Some of us are coming from very good backgrounds. Therefore, I know you've been waiting upon your uncle, upon your father, upon your, your family members that are in the U.S. That every time you make a call, because you've been waiting upon them, they send dollars. But this morning, we want to see what it means or how we can wait upon God. And our guiding verse is from the book of Psalms 27. Psalms 27, we only go to read verse number 14. But for, for the, the 13 verses talks about so many declarations that David made before the Lord. Verse number 14 says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The Bible does not say that you wait on your parents or wait on your spouse. Because if it says wait on your parents, there are those of us who don't have parents, whom will you wait upon? It says wait upon your spouse. There are some of us who are not married. It says wait upon your children. There are some of us who don't have children. And I remember sometimes back the Lord put a word in me and he said that there are parents who wait upon their children every end of the month. They don't wait upon the Lord, but they wait upon their children because their children are learned, their children are working. And the Lord asked me, if those parents are waiting for their children to send them money, what about those parents that don't have children? Whom would they wait upon? You even come to a, a time of cursing your children. That you know I can curse you. Yes, you can curse them. But the Bible says in the book of, of Proverbs 26 that a curse without a reason cannot land. I want to speak to my, to my, my, my peers or parents in this place. That you look forward as if you are employed. You count. to do it 30. What is she thinking about me? Remember this. You never educated your children for them to help you. It is only God who can touch them that they can remember you. Therefore, don't take any chance of cursing your children. And the Lord asked me, yes, the parents are cursing their children. What about those who are never blessed with the children? Whom will they wait upon? David is saying, wait upon the Lord. And he says, wait patiently. We, we are all of us here in some point in life, you are unwell. And there's nobody who has patient like a patient. You go, you want to see a doctor. And you, you, when you see, want to see a doctor, you are number 15. And you have a lot of, regardless how painful you, you, you are feeling or how painful, the painful is severe. But you can wait for the doctor because you know that your last solution lies with the doctor. Unasonga Unambiwa next, na next number 50. And you cannot leave because you want to be treated, because you want to be well. Therefore, David said, be brave and courageous. Friends, in this work of salvation, it's only the brave people who will make it, and the courageous people. If you love yourself, 
you are in the wrong place. This walk of faith is only the brave people and the courageous. And he says, yes. He repeats himself and says, yes. Wait patiently for the Lord. Not for your family member. Not for your Kenya. Now everybody is crying, the economy of Kenya. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I want to read it in the, the Passion Translation. This is this. The Passion Translation. Here is what I have learned through it all. And this is David. Through it. I don't know what you have learned through it all. David says, don't give up. Don't be impatient. He, 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 he entwined as one with the Lord. And he says, be brave and courageous. And never lose hope. David said, yes, keep on waiting, for he will never disappoint you. Friends, David says in Psalms 30 verse 5b, that weeping may tarry for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You're just about to give up. And maybe it is 5 in the morning. The Lord is saying, don't give up. Weeping may tarry for a night, but joy, not pain, joy comes in the morning. We are living in a generation of fast food. We don't want to wait. In the times that we are living now, the word wait is a vocabulary. Because you want fast food, unaguza. Are we together? You want instant messages and instant delivery. Unasama sijisiki kupika. You want it? call what wa chakula wanakuletea wapi wana deliver everything times that you are living is instant therefore waiting for us is a vocabulary but the lord is saying wait upon me it doesn't say come he said you do what you wait upon him you wait for a train to, for a train to go those who use sgr you wait for the train you wait for the bus you wait for a plane. You wait for mails. You want, you, somebody sent you an invitation letter. You end up post office every week because you've been waiting for that invitation letter to go where? Where you want to go. You wait for a yes or no. Somebody proposed. Now come here, let me go and pray about it. Now oh, you're waiting. For how long? Yes, a month is over. Two months are over. Au nini nazeeka? Eh, anaona unazeeka. Na ukezeka ndo unagoja. So you've been waiting. Bane Yesu asifiwe. You are waiting at the doctor's reception. The doctor said, I need to do some test. And this test will take five hours. The tests were done. And you wait. Have you seen the doctor? I'm waiting for the results. You wait. And as you wait, your heart is pumping because you don't know the outcome of the results. But you have to do what? To wait. You wait even for your hair to grow. I'm not waiting for mine to grow. You wait. When I swear, Moses, you wait, you wait, you wait. This life is full of waiting. And the Lord will only come to those who do what? Who wait. Everyone is just waiting waiting and waiting. You talk to Pastor Brian, he's going to do what? To get married. Sindio, you talk to Josephine, she's going to be called a grandmother. You wait for, you, you come to my severe, I'm waiting to do this, this, and that. Every one of us this morning, you are waiting. I don't know what you are waiting. Maybe you are waiting for a husband. You are waiting for a wife. You are waiting for a child. You are waiting for a grandchild. You are waiting for a grand grandchild. You are waiting to come out of the rental house to your own home. You are waiting to be a landlady like me. I want to be a landlady. I'm in the waiting. I don't know what you are waiting. Life is about waiting. It's not about your ears. No, it's not about your ears. Life is about waiting. Therefore, we are all patiently waiting and waiting upon the Lord. Life is not about the destination. It's about the journey. 
When somebody passes on, I love to give him this example. Let, let, you know, when I use you, you can accuse me. Let me use myself. Beatrice was born 1950. There's a Kadash. Are we together? The, the, the Kadash, and then it is sunrise dash sunset. You know, well, life is, it is in that Kadash what you did. And that is the journey. We have the beginning and the end. What the Lord is concerned about, it is that Kadash. From sunrise to sunset. And you know, friends, the Lord might not come in the morning, but he can come in the evening. But what are you doing between sunrise and sunset? That is what the Lord is after. And that is the journey. And that is the waiting. Waiting is an ingredient in this journey of faith. We love cooking. And you know, when, as, you know salt makes a lot of difference in your food. Salt. But as long as you can say, Mimi nitakula sani ya chumvi leo. Atelion, unakula nini sani ya chumvi? If you go to a home where there's completely nothing, there's no food, two things remain in that house. Majani na chumvi. These that you cannot put on a plate and eat. I be together. So in this journey of faith, the number one thing that you need to make it successful and for us to go to reach where we are going, you need waiting. It's an ingredient. Waiting. Waiting. And nobody has told you up to even us mothers. You conceive today. And the doctor says you may have your baby be two weeks before time or two weeks after. Nobody is very specific that um ata uju pata conceive lini. Unasema na fikiri ni one week or two weeks. The same case applies to the doctor. Ata kuambi it is two weeks before or two weeks after. So what do you do? You wait. You wait. You wait. And say, I think I'm nine months. And I go and be, mm -mm. From the scan, you have two more weeks to go. But those two weeks, one week, the baby comes. Now, where's the ambi? I'm toto. Uta ku toka hapa kwa sabu. Nime book aga kan. We must go to aga kan. Kwa hivyo uta toka. Akisema ni kukuja nifanya nini? Wewe na aga kan na Nairobi hospital. You've been waiting. But the day is here. Bwana yesu wa sifiwe. But what happens when the journey has told you've been waiting? And this journey is as if it has told. Let me remind you, friends, there's no way today, tomorrow can be today. Tomorrow will be Monday. It doesn't matter how long you've been waiting. There is no day that duplicates the other. It is tomorrow will be Monday. Today is, today. Today is Sunday. Therefore, you keep on waiting because the Lord knows you are waiting. And that is the beauty. There is always a process between a promise from God and the fulfillment of that promise. Was that promise from God? You wait upon him? Then there is a fulfillment. If he promised, he will fulfill. And somebody said this, that our God can never order what he cannot pay. Uta chonga viazi to me, tunaweza chonga viazi. Kwa sababu tunaweza enda uode zaidi ya mfuko yangu. Tunachonga vi. Watu bado wanachonga viazi hata sasa. Ama ilisha. So God can never order what cannot be. If he promised and said, wait upon me. He never gave you the specific time that is coming. But he said, wait upon. Because in my appointed time, I will, and when I'll come, things will never be the same again. Therefore, wait upon the Lord. Bwana yesu wa sifiwe. Yes, we miss God because waiting is not easy. And I'll tell you, friends, the only foundation, and get me right, everything comes down, bottom up. Sindio, the only foundation that begins at the top is the grave. Are we together? The only foundation. Other foundations, they, bring, they begin down coming up. But the only foundation that brings on the top, it is the grave. Because the grave is a final. It begins from the top going down. 
and it is the final. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Therefore sometimes the process may be short and other times it may be long. But you may wonder if you correctly heard from God. I want to submit to you this morning, you heard from the Lord. But apply the principle of waiting. And don't compare yourself. We went to school with so and so. They are doing very well. You are not so and so. This is what I normally tell friends, my friends, that when you are sleeping, you sleep on this hand. Are we together? Sunaraga Ivi. Sunaraga Ivi. Usi tete hi mkono. This can do anything. Tete nyo melalia. Because this one can do anything. It will not do anything. Kwa sababu mefanya nene, umela. Lakini hii ambu ujalalia, it can do anything. Ineze kaiba, lakini sikuizu watu wa waibi, ineze kachukua, ineze kaficha, kwa sababu haujailalia. Tete hili ambu mefanya nene, umelalia. Buwana sifiwe. But the waiting place doesn't have to be depressing and empty. Feed your longings for what's next. No. You just wait for the Lord. Pole, pole. And in a very simplified way because he said he's coming. Wait upon him. Otherwise you'll be depressed. It can be a wonderful place of growth and cultivation for you. When you're waiting for the Lord, it is a time for growth. You grow because as you wait, unachimbua mandiko. As you wait, you know how to pray. As you wait, you know how to fast. It is a time of growth and cultivation. It's not a time to complain and to murmur. Waiting can be so, so hard. Best scripture in the Bible says, wait on the Lord. That is the remedy. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he said, strengthen your heart. Wait upon the Lord. When you wait, you wait while you serve. You wait while serving. You just sit in a goja mungu kutoka subui mbaka jioni. You wait as you serve. Waiting means practicing faithfulness in difficult times and situations. Waiting means practicing God's faithfulness in difficult times and situations. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Please know this. Your testimony is very key in your waiting. Pastor Brent taught us in the morning about in the book of Revelation that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Where who testimony? I don't know where testimony went. When we were growing up, you could spend times moments and even minutes sharing your testimony. I'm born again. My name is Beatrice and I'm born again. I love the Lord so, so much. Like it's easy. Testimony in a kufuata nyuma. Where usha enda? How will you overcome? You don't have a testimony. Guard your testimony, friends. As you wait upon the Lord, guard your testimony. Waiting time is not forever. That is the beauty of our God. The struggle that we have today is temporal not permanent, and to have an expiry date. doesn't matter what you are going through. Is that pain? You've been waiting, telling God, I've been waiting, I feel I'm fed up. Where can you go? Where can you, when you're fed up, where can you go? Because you are running from the devil, going to the Lord. When you leave the Lord, then you run to the devil. Wait upon the Lord. What you are going through now, it is temporal, with a stamp, that it has an expiry date. Waiting time can deepen our relationship with our God. When you wait, it depends my relationship with the Lord. Because it does not distract my focus. My focus is one. It is me and my God. Doesn't matter the side shows of the devil, but I focus to wait upon my God. Because I know in his timing, he makes everything beautiful. Wait upon the Lord. God's timing is better than our deadlines. This year, when it began this year, all of us had resolutions that this year I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. Therefore, you gave God deadlines. Today, you are the most frustrated person because you are looking now 
it is end of october two months to go hata ni conceive leo nitapata mtoto by the end of the year hata leo nikiproposiwa tutakot for two months na tuone you give god deadlines and you are saying now i feel so frustrated by god higher then what can you do god's timing is better than our deadlines many of us are frustrated by god due to the deadline you gave him and you know god does not work with the deadlines he works with his timing please don't give god deadlines give tell him according to your timeline and in your timing i know you make everything beautiful what are we missing friends in the times that we are living we are missing patience we are missing patience and your patience is a fruit of the spirit it is not a seed it is a fruit of the spirit but you are missing patience what is patience it is the ability to survive the season of not yet patience is the ability to survive the season of not yet i'm still waiting i'm still waiting upon the lord that season to survive that is what we call patience patience is the acceptance that things go on a different way than what we had in mind patience is the acceptance that things go on a different way than what we had in mind this is what you had in january you saw it from afar but this is october things took a different shift but you are still waiting upon god work on your patience bwana sifiwe as we read from the book of psalms 27 was one to 13 we can see david he had a lot of resolutions and bigger plans for his life like me and you we had for this year but david is encouraging us to wait patiently not lightly but patiently it makes you feel better even jesus had a waiting time jesus son of the living god had a waiting please think about it the son of god was a carpenter until he performed his first miracle at the age of 30 years if jesus could wait and he was the son of god what about us that's a long time to wait have you waited for 30 years if we had to walk through the process of waiting then how much more can we wait it is a process waiting is a process the good news is that the waiting place brings an opportunity it brings an opportunity not necessary to change our circumstances but to allow yourself to be changed through the process i come again The good news is that the waiting place brings an opportunity not necessarily to change your circumstance but to allow yourself to be changed through the process. Think of a refiner's fire. Refiner's fire. For a gold to be gold, it goes through the refiner's fire seven times and you say now is this the fifth, fifth time i think i am fed up when you come out of the refiner's fire when you want to go back through it you will start at the beginning so you better stay in the process until the lord is done with you wait in the process psalms 27 verse 13 david said I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm here to encourage you friend this morning. Don't lose heart. Say like David, you would have lost heart unless you believed that you would see the goodness, not the badness, not the other side of the world, but the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 
This shows that you can be strong and take courage as you wait on the Lord. Knowing that you will see his promises come to pass in your life. The goodness he's talking about are the promises that he had asked the Lord and the Lord had bestowed for him at his appointed time that you bring them forth to David. When you don't wait, friends, you don't see the goodness of the Lord. His promises do not come to pass in your life. He's encouraging us this morning to wait. Not to wait upon anything else, but to wait upon him. Even when you aren't where you want to be, you can still embrace the place where you are. You said, by the end of this year, I want to be here. You are not yet there, but embrace where you are. Because you are a remnant. You may not have what it takes, but you are a remnant. There are many who had what it takes, but today they are no more. Just purpose to embrace where you are. Being patient is a sign of strength. Being patient is a sign of strength. The Lord will only only strengthen those who wait upon him. We say that he will renew renew their strength. In the book of Jeremiah 29, verse number 10, the Bible says, For thus is the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. Hold it there. After how long? These people waited for 70 years because the Lord has spoken. They knew their part is to wait, but God is coming to fulfill. He said, after 70 years, I will visit you. Not I will send anybody, but I will visit you and perform my good word. Which word? what I promised toward you and cause you to return to this place after 70 years. Buena Sifiwe. 70 years and he will come and do all the good things he had promised. And then verse number, the, 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 the common verse we normally say, verse number 11, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a, we, we, we only focus on this verse, but you don't look what happened in verse number 10. 70 years. After 70 years are over, I will come. After he has come, he has come to do what? To fulfill what he has promised because he holds our future and to give us hope. Because he has, he knows the plans he has for you and he has for you. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. What a loving father we have. That regardless how long you have waited, you have not waited for 70 years. They waited for 70 years. And finally the Lord came. And when he came, the rest is history for those who waited. Not all of those who are in the wilderness or who are in captive, they reached the promised land. But only for those who waited. Purpose to wait. Because the one who is promised is faithful to fulfill. Then there was a young shepherd boy by the name of David. This is in the book of First Samuel. We won't read because of the interest of time. David was a young shepherd boy in the book of First Samuel, chapter sixteen. He was anointed to be king over Israel. David waited for twenty years before he became the king of Israel. Twenty years and twenty chapters before he was pronounced the king of Israel. David went through a time through the the, the, the kingship of Saul. Somebody who was a tyrannical king, a place that was so insecure. He faced assassination. Even he hid as a fugitive. He was homeless and isolated and absolutely crushed. But remember this David knew one thing that I was appointed and anointed as a king. But he waited for 20 years. Have you waited for 20 years, friends? But in the waiting, God developed him to become the greatest king of Israel. There's something that happens in the waiting. When we were growing up, 
we, we, we didn't have, we, obviously, you know, we didn't have the phones. We used to have cameras. Are we together? When I swear my age means, we used to have cameras. When I a picture, when the film is going to be developed, it was developed in the dark room. Are we together? Kwa sabu kwa muangaza itafanya nini? Itachome. Ah, muko. Itachome ona nini? They used to take the, the films into the dark room. They develop them. Then unaleta wa picha. Friends. In the waiting is the dark room. And nobody knows what is happening in the dark room. It's only you and the promise giver. It is only you and your maker. Remain in the dark room. Because we want to see you. For those who have gone to weddings, we mothers, we are going to kuchukua bibiarusi ya subui. Everybody comes and stays outside. Sindi yo? Lakini si tunambio, tuingie ndani, tufanya nini? Ndiyo, tukuja na bibi arusi. When bibi arusi ametarishwa mamba yote imemadizika. Si kila mtu wana muona. Mtu wana muona mkika uko inje. Si ataleta wa inje. So in the waiting, in the dark room, the, the bridegroom is prepared and then she is brought outside. We are waiting for you. Remain in the dark room. Remain in the inner chamber. Because when the Lord is done with you, he bring you out and you are going to celebrate you. But where is your waiting? Where is your patience? We cannot confuse the appointing with the anointing. David was appointed and he was anointed. But he waited for 20 years for the fulfillment of the promise of God. All of us are anointed. All of us here, we are anointed. We are all purpose with a calling. But for some of us, embracing today means we wait. We train. We listen. We are crushed. We become resilient. resilient, And we get ready. For us to face tomorrow, we must wait today. There's no day that is called tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Monday. To Asema, we are waiting for tomorrow. We are all of us in the waiting. In the waiting. In the waiting. For that day, the better day that is known as tomorrow. And it has never come. Plans are important, but so is prayer. Listening and waiting. Yes, it's good to pray. It's good to plan. But above all those things, wait. The Lord is waiting. Wait. Because when you wait, for sure he will come. When we come, everybody will know. Uko mungu wa metembea. Because we've been waiting. Buwana Yesu asifiwe. The Bible says, as I finish, in the, in the book of James 1, verse 2 and 4. We've been doing the book of James. For those who miss Bible study, you are missing. You are missing out. We've been doing the book of James. And James 1, 2 to 4 says, my brethren, you see, it's not my enemies, it's my brethren, those who are together in this journey of faith, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Verse number 4, but let patience have its, have its perfect work. Perfect! We see, can be shared. Let it have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking can you imagine? Lacking nothing but there is patience. Buana Sifiwe. If you know the blessings, the process of waiting would if you know the blessings, the process of waiting would produce in your life, you'd gladly embrace it, allowing patience to refine us and bring us to a place of wholeness. When patience refines you or defines you, it brings you to a place of wholeness. And that's why you lack nothing. Buana asifiwe. In the Old Testament, we, we read about Sarah. Sarah in the Old Testament was given a promise from God. Not just any promise. Not any promise. Promises are many. But she was given a seemingly impossible promise. She was told she would have a baby. Even though she was well spent the age of having children. She was able to have a child by faith. Though she was barren and was too 
old. She believed God would keep his promise. What has the Lord promised you? Sarah looked at her age and the age of her husband. They were barren. They were stricken in age. But she held on the promise of the one who promised. She believed God would keep his promise. She considered him faithful who promised. Even when you cannot understand the promise or can't see it, how it will come to pass, you can wait on the promiser. Say, I know only one thing. Yes, I am old. I'm past the age of giving birth to children. But I know one, the one who promised is faithful to fulfill. Hold on to that, my sister, my brother. It doesn't matter what the age is saying. It doesn't matter. You look at you and say, it is only me. You are not the only one. Elijah was there, told the Lord, it is only me who is remaining. But the Lord told him, I have 7,000 who have not bowed to the gods of Baal. You are not the only one. Keep on waiting and wait upon the Lord. Abraham, they waited for 25 years to have a son. Joseph waited for about 20 years before his dream came to pass. David waited for 20 years to become the king. Noah faithfully waited. Sorry, built the ark and waited for the flood for 100 years waiting for the flood. Moses waited for 40 years before leading the people out of Egypt. And Esther, the queen, she fasted for three days before speaking to the king. Life is about waiting, friends. There's nothing good that can, you can get out of this life without waiting. Work on your waiting and waiting upon the Lord. There's no way to be ready for tomorrow if you haven't lived and waited through yesterday. Yesterday, today's tomorrow. Today is yesterday's tomorrow. And tomorrow will be today's yesterday. So you have to wait. Tell your heart, I have to wait. I have to wait. What are you waiting on right now? What I am waiting for is not what you are waiting for. Maybe what you are waiting for, I have it. Maybe you're waiting for a husband. Me have a husband. Maybe you're waiting for children. Me have children. You're waiting for grandchildren. I have grandchildren. My waiting is not your waiting. But we are all patiently waiting upon the Lord. Present your case and tell the Lord, my case is urgent. And the Lord wants to hear. What are you waiting for? Isaiah 40, 31. Isaiah 40, 31, as we conclude. But to those who wait on the Lord. You see those. It's not but the one. This, this blessed my heart. To see that we are many. But to those who wait on. It, the Lord speaks in plural. Not in singular. In plural. But to those who wait on the Lord. He speaks in plural. For he knows we are many on the waiting. You are not alone. Who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, not his strength or her strength, but their, because we are many, you know their strength. They shall, not he shall or you shall, they shall mount up with the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint because we are many on this journey. The Lord is addressing us this morning or this afternoon because you know we are many in the waiting. Are you among the number of the waiting? Are you among the number in the waiting? You're waiting for salvation of your loved one? Salvation of your children? The Lord to remember your children? We are all waiting. And our waiting is as different as our names. We came through this door. Our waiting is different. You tell, Lord, Lord, remember me. I'm waiting for deliverance of my children. I am waiting for the salvation of my loved ones. I am waiting for my healing. I am waiting to remember me. We are, our waiting is as different as our names. But the Lord is saying, I know all of you, but keep on waiting upon me. Because I am coming. Everybody wants to win. But nobody wants to wait. Is that your portion? Everybody wants to win. But nobody wants to wait. My prayer is, you wait 
as I wait. So that you can encourage one another in this journey. That you are waiting upon the Lord. No one of us is waiting upon his brother or sister. Shift from waiting upon your, your loved ones. Shift from waiting upon that prominent person. The Lord is saying, wait upon me. I don't know for how long you've been waiting. And I don't know where you are. You are saying, I'm just about to give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. The Lord has not given up on you. He's saying, one more. One more because I am coming. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We worship and magnify your name. You told your disciples that it's better you go so that you can send the Holy Spirit. That it can enable us to wait. We know waiting is not easy to your Father. We count days, we count weeks, we count months, we count years to your Father. It is, seems as if you have forgotten us to your Lord. But this morning, we want to embrace where we are because we know that our tomorrow shall be better than today. You have brought us this far, Jehovah God. You cannot leave us because you have promised not to leave us or forsake us. This morning, we desire to wait. Help us to wait and wait patiently because you are coming to do a new thing in our lives in the name of Jesus. I sing a song and said, I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. God knows my name. I may be out there, my brother and my sister. You are feeling as if God has forgotten you. I request you to stand. We agree together. Because he say he has not forgotten you. He knows you. He knows your name. Are you there? You are feeling forgotten. You are feeling as if you have come to the end of yourself. The Lord is saying, I know you. Father, we want to thank you. We want to bless you. What a promise. That you never leave us nor forsake us to your Lord. Come and renew our strength in waiting to your Lord. Because it is only those who are waiting upon you that you are going to renew their strength. But Father, renew our strength. Renew our strength, Jehovah Father. Renew the strength of my sister. Renew the strength of my brother that are standing this afternoon to your Father. They want to wait upon you, not to wait upon their parents or their children or their loved ones, my Father. Not to wait upon anybody else apart from you, Jehovah Father, because other people are going to fail us. But we wait upon you, Jehovah God. You renew our strength. We want to thank you. What a promise. Because you are God who lacks nothing. There is no lack in you, Jehovah God. Help us to wait. Because in the fullness of your time, Jehovah, you make everything beautiful. We are here for you. These two months that are remaining to the end of this year, you can change our story. Just send your word to your Father. Send your word and change our situation because you have a solution for every situation of our Father. Speak to our lives. Speak to the dry bones in our lives, Jehovah, and bring life in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you. We want to bless you because you are a good, good Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.